Hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. Where we talk about pop culture, current events. And spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. <laughs> Scoldy moldy. Ah! I don't have my fan. I couldn't flip it. Oh, oh no! And I just screamed. So and everybody's going to be like, no, I'm very upset. <laughs> it's been too long, It has been a long time since we've done a Gag of the Millennial, Absolutely guys. Absolutely I do apologise. Obviously, restrictions in the UK made it very difficult for us to be able to do this. And now we can. Now we can, girls. Yes. So, hi, Luxaria. How have you been? Very unwell. <laughs> severely unwell. Just severely unwell. Been in my house, very upset for about eight years eight now. Eight years, yeah. It's been, yeah. A- <laughs> it's been a long one, sis. It's been a long one. This, this, I mean, we don't really want to talk too much about it because you've no, lived it. This but this panini is unacceptable. This, this, this second lockdown that happened was actually a lot. Like it was, it just kind of really affected people like so much more than I was expecting. Um, Me included. And obviously we've not been able to see each other for such a long time. And now that we're able to, it's like, oh my God, like what? What's Finally. happening? Who are you? Who are you? What's happening? What's, what's happening? What's, 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 the, story? what's, what's happening? The story? What's happening? Yes. Yeah. So hopefully you guys have been doing okay. I know restrictions are very different around the world. So um, whatever situation you are in, hopefully you are good and we're sending you all the best. Um, but today we want to talk about school memories, shocking things that happened when we were in school. School disasters, girl. S- scandals. Because we both had quite like outrageously like school school at least we went to weird schools like you had yes. knife crime and shit yeah. i had her i mean we'll get into it like drugs and all this stuff Weird like places. so we want to talk about like school memories and things and things that like also what um happened when we were kids and i'm sure people our age will understand this that would never go down oh yeah right now. like now that it's would, like health and safety is too high or like it's you know not enough or like just th- just things that won't happen when we were young yeah. that would just not fly to the yeah. today's standards and like not even just because like the law has changed or whatever just not fly because society itself has yeah. moved on and just yeah. gone that's actually unacceptable to behave in that way now yeah you need to go to prison you need to go to prison for eight prison years eh? that's where you've actually been that's where i've it's been it's not been locked down you've been in prison for eight years hashtag hardened in prison oh so <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? I don't know what happened. So, well, yes. let's, as we always do, let's start from the very beginning. So I went to a school called St. Sidwell's in Devon. Um, I know there's a few people last time I mentioned this. Was like, oh, oh my God, St. Sidwell's girl. Um, so I went to school St. Sidwell's. It's not actually there anymore. Um, well, it's there, but like the building has been taken down. It's not like, it's like completely remodernized. It's become the ghost it's, of a Victorian it's ghost, child. It's the ghost, yes, Haunting this well. Yes. But I, so I moved in with my grandparents when I was eight. Oh, I get eight or nine. I forget exactly because it was like right about my birthday this time. Um, and so I went to a new school called Newton St. Sires Primary School. This shocks a lot of people when I say it because we spoke about this before. But like, so my school at the time was really tiny. We, only oh, had, yeah. we had 64 people in the entire school. My year group, year, uh, year five at the time had like 10 people in. And then it was about 10 people in year six. And so we, year five and year six shared a classroom. Can I just say for context... My single class being brought up in a city had 35, <laughs> 35 pupils per class. Yeah, no, we, we just had we just had 20 and that was year five and six. My old primary school, Newton St. Sire School, is now a really sought after primary school and like it's so hard to get into. But like, so strange, I got into it, it like that yeah. and it was like instantly into it. But like I didn't really get bullied then. So it was actually quite a nice harmonious kind of atmosphere where like everyone just kind of got on. Like, yeah. you know, do you know the scene from like Mean Girls when the girls are like, I wish we were just pure nice and big flowers. Yeah, yeah. And, like that was, that was your that life. Was, that was, that was my school in primary school. I th- ever since moving to New Society, I thought it was really nice. But we, I was like, overtly gay like there was no oh, shock yeah. there was no shock but i was always in like all the choirs and i was doing all the, the choir, acting yeah. things i was like always like i want to be this actor in this play i want to play in this role and oh so that's quite we sweet, did though. um there was one show called uh keep moving and it was about this like time traveling like brother and sister i didn't get the main role but i got a character called miles um and on the day that we had to perform like the last um like show there was like flash floods in devon and so like of course there was so one of the one of the guys who was going to play the it was like a scientist man at the end Ooh. couldn't arrive so mrs oh. miss walker was like uh, you're also you're so good at remembering lines Riley. can you um take his role and i had to do like another role and learn the learn the lines and like like on the 15 day. minutes before oh, wow. we were going on um so that was fun but i still remember this it was like so when you 
uh, the opening song for Keep Moving was like, Mum says, tidy up your bedroom. <laughs> Mum says, sort for all your toys. <laughs> Clear you up everything this? that's rubbish. Don't go making lots of noise. So much stuff, we don't know where to put it. So much stuff, we don't know what to do. And it went on like that. It was so funny. How but do you remember this from like 11 I, I told you, I have ago. a good memory. Yeah, I don't forget insane, shit. Insane, insane. Um, I can't remember yesterday, let alone 12 <laughs> years ago. No, it'd be more like was, 22 years ago. <gasps> Don't say that. Disgusting. But I was um I was disgusting. always in all, all the school plays. I was in all of the all of the sh- <laughs> all of like the choirs. Um, I was just such. And even when I was in high school, I was still being like the choir boy. Um, but then I started getting bullied, and I was like, No, no. I'm just going to stay. Oh, you must have had at least when you were a child a a bowl haircut or something, or like mm-hmm. you never. Oh my god. So no, I had other haircuts, but I never had a bowl. Cut, oh my sis. god. Okay, so I'm so. I originally lived with my parents. Um, after they got divorced, my dad died and stuff. My mum used to kind of take control of my hair and she used to like shave it, like properly like shave it like oh. down to the skin. And my grandparents loathed it so really? much. Like absolutely hated it. They were like, you look like a thug. You look like a oh, thug. Yeah. Um, and obviously this is like 19, this is in like the late 90s and early 2000s. So when I moved in with my grandparents, uh, my grandmother insisted on always cutting my hair and she would all like, it was because when you're when you're really young, you don't think about it too much. You kind of don't care. So, like I had those. Oh no, I cared so oh, did you? About See, my I, hair I didn't even child. think about it. Like I had this horrendous haircut from like the age of like eight to about maybe thirteen until so, like, I was like no, mm-hmm. and he's, and then I was like letting my hair grow because I had that like, had, the, had the like the trend of like all the boys growing their hair long and had that weird little phase. But we're jumping ahead of the story, but. Oh my God, the haircuts, her- absolutely horrendous. My sister once, so I was about 14 at this time and I went to the uh, the hairdressers and I was I had like a really traumatic experience that kind of oh, made no, me really? terrified of like being in the hairdressers. Oh, no. So my sister cut my hair the next time. And was it worse? <sighs> I can't even, like Luxaria, like literally. She, I don't know what she was doing or why she agreed to do it. And I, at this point I had really long hair <gasps> and she literally, I've got a line that I'm following and she just literally just snipped all my hair around the outside and it looked like, like a bowl. I can't even, it was like a bowl. And then the next day I was like, I can't go to school today, I'm so unwell. And it was just cause I, I was too embarrassed at leaving the house. Cup. It was horrendous. So then from that time onwards, I was like, I need to go to an actual salon yeah, who can yeah, cut hair. Yeah. Like not these little shitty barbers that my granddad would well, take me to. Cause these old people who can barely cut hair anymore. They're like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been pecked to death. <laughs> 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 But that's what it's like. Anyway, we've kind of jumped ahead of the story. So yeah, so so just so people who people who don't know, the idea of an old hairdresser being like, I've been picked to death. I've been with your bald Um Ludicrous. So just for people who aren't in the UK, I'm not sure like what other places call them, but like, so I think primary school in YouTube, uh, primary school in the UK is what they call it, elementary school. Is that what they call I, it? I'm pretty sure. I that's think that's what it is. So yeah. it's like when from from when you're like five six to about ten and yeah. then you go on to high school yeah. so it's that that's kind of thing what's the best memories you have from like primary school time okay so i didn't go to a primary school at first i actually went to an infant school what does that mean so my um so oh, i can never really explain infant this school. yeah so you know that primary school had like upper uh, had lower and upper so you had like year one to three and then four five and six yeah so i went to a school where that was split oh. so we had an infant school and a junior school i had no idea that was a thing yes it's, it's a thing so i i so if i had not moved out of that school i would have gone to infant school junior school high school okay so i would have done three schools i mean mm-hmm. i did three schools anyway because i'm a special lady who was getting bullied oh. Oh. um not actually very fun but let's talk about it sis on therapy 101 uh, so one of my like earliest memories of school I went to a place called Hartford Infant School. Mm-hmm. And I went back when I was like a teenager and it's it's like it's the tiniest little school in Brighton. Yeah. But when I like went there as a child, I remember it being like absolutely massive, mm-hmm. massive. So one of my favorite memories from this, let's start with the good one, shall we? Yeah, start yeah, with the good yeah. we'll start with good memories, yeah. <laughs> so my mum was a graphic designer, illustrator. She'd worked for um, Paddington Bear. She'd done all of these like illustrations for books and things. Yeah. So she was known as like the artsy mum. She's Ooh. the, art, you've got the art mum. That's basically my story. <laughs> There's the horse girl and art mum. Yeah, basically that. <laughs> I, I was the art mum child. Yep. And so my mum was commissioned to make all of these school uh, like, outfit costumes oh, for like the, the um the christmas play yeah and the, one of the christmas plays i don't know why this was at the end of year one it was willy wonka's chocolate factory Ooh. i don't know how this is festive at all but <laughs> basically so my mum had to make like 40 squirrel children no <laughs> 40 cost squirrel costumes yeah. for children and um 
but she had to like compose like this whole thing of like how the squirrel outfits are gonna work, yeah. the little mask, the little tails. And then like, we all had to run around this little thing and throw nuts in this box. And then we had to take one of the children away being Veruca, cause that's how it happens. Spoilers yeah. alert, even though this film came out, what, 80 years 80, ago now? Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's one of my favorite ones. One of my favorite memories. And we still have a tape of it at home is like the end of school, end oh. of year play. That's my like favorite memory I have. And I don't really even remember lots about it. I just sort of remember doing it. Yeah. It's just literally like dressed as a squirrel, run out on stage and be, oh. like you have to like pretend to pick up nuts and listen to them. Yeah. And there was this song that was like da 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 and it was like very exciting. That's popcorn. Yes, that <laughs> yeah, one. It was yeah, that popcorn. Song. popcorn. Yeah. It was popcorn. <laughs> it was very exciting. Um and then we had to carry Veruca off the stage. And I oh, remember Veruca wonderful. was played by this awful girl in my Who school. had the best who role would fit her then? Basically. But she had like <laughs> short blonde hair, which is probably why she was cast for it. Yeah. She had short blonde bob and I remember I'm Veruca Salt. Basically, everyone used to call her Cave Girl because her hair <laughs> used to be like she had the square she had a square fringe and like square bangs. <laughs> oh no! Okay. And everyone used to be like, eh, you, uh, eh, to her. You, so the reason I kind of talk about hairstyles a lot more. Um, so when I was in, I must have been about year four or five. I don't remember exactly what it was, but for some strange reason, me and three of my friends, we decided that we we're going to cut each other's hair like in school. But the thing is, like school scissors were like blunt as fuck. Like it never Safety really did anything. Scissors. And do you remember, do you remember like, the left-handed ones that would like be green and like, oh, green awful. and yellow? Yeah. So I was trying to use these, not realizing they were left-handed ones. They were. I was. So I had my I had my friend, and I pulled his hair up, started trying to cut his hair, and then he was cutting mine, and then like Billy and Tarot were like cutting each other's hair. And I don't know why we were doing, I don't know what made us do this. But then the teacher like found out what we were doing and flipped her shit. Like she went absolute berserk. And so as punishment in our playground, it was literally like the most awful thing that happened to you. So uh, the playgrounds were separated between like uh, years, like one to three. Oh, and really? then like up, up until the uh, year six. And so they had the top half and we had the bottom half. Yeah. And then there was this wall that basically was on one side of the playground uh, where it was like just a wall. Nothing was yeah. like just, just one big wall. And if you had been naughty, that was your time out. So you would have to stand up against the wall for the entirety of like break or lunch, depending on what the teacher's done. So everyone in the playground knows that you've been naughty. Oh my God. It was so embarrassing. At one time- Is when, this legal now? Is this, I don't is know. It I don't know if like, like public shaming. that child by public shaming, shaming Ring the bell of shame. Because I remember, I remember someone <laughs> saw me and ran up to the upper playground. I was like, got my sister. And was like, your brother's so in trouble. <gasps> and she came running down, going, "What have you done?" Now I was like, "I've cut hair." <laughs> <laughs> But it was mortifying. But that's the thing, like you would never do it again. Yeah. And talk about, like, would that happen now? Like, would there be kind of like, because like, I, I as well. I think they've just got TikTok children getting naked now. Yeah, that's a huge problem. Different, but also different like problems, different times. I'm, I'm talking about public shaming stuff. Like you would have in lessons as well. If one person was naughty, the amount of times the teacher would be like, you're all in detention now and it's their oh, fault. Oh, that was awful. It was like socialism for the punishment. <laughs> Stupid. But talking like, about punishments, talking about punishments, I've literally just had a memory flooding mm -hmm. back from when I moved to my next school. So I'll save that after mm -hmm. you've finished with your story. No, that's but that's, oh, that, that's that, story. That, yeah, you can well, carry on. Talking about punishments then. So I had to move schools in year three. I moved um and I had two weeks out of school to be like homeschooled. Yeah. Um because I had problems with a bully. So I moved to S uh St. Martin's Primary School in Brighton, which is C of E, hashtag Hail Satan. Very Christian, <laughs> very, very Christian school. That's probably, we had to sing hymns and everything. Oh, I, but okay, all of my schools have been Christian schools. When I was in mm. year four, we had this teacher called Mrs. Keeley. And if you did all your work and you were really good, you, you and a partner could go and listen to a tape. Any tape that you want. What's that? Is it like stories? Like stories or music okay. or like very, very child Hickory dickory dock. Basically. And there was this tape called V for Victory and it was all about like the war. And there was this like classical m music moment. And I was a little operatic singer as a child. Oh, so give us a blast. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Basically, Gout. we had to put headphones on and we were listening to this. It was me and this other child, a miscellaneous child, A. And we were sitting next to each other on this little bench listening to this. And I just break out into top of my lungs going, Aah! like to this music. <laughs> and Mrs. Keeley was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop doing that immediately. And it was just like, 
I remember she looked at me and because I had these headphones on, I couldn't hear that I was making all this noise. And I just remember her like pointing like this and everyone in the class had turned around because I had my eyes closed while singing. And I was like, she was like, the face that she had was literally like the worst thing she, I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, <gasps> and you know that like mortification, <laughs> you know, when you've done something so wrong as a child and yeah. everyone has like noticed you for yeah. it. Like mm-hmm. I was just making a load of, like going back, I'm like, calm down, sis. I just made, made a loud noise. You could have been like, excuse me. You do realize that this is happening. Yeah. Instead, she ridiculed me, took me off of that thing, made me sit in the corner. Wow. And everyone was literally looking at me. And then she was like, everyone has to work in silence now from this interruption. And I was like, I don't know my what work. What a horrible too. teacher. Oh, she was awful. She was an absolute tyrant, she was. And then I remember one of the, one of the, uh, when we got a little bit older into year six, one of the um, girls in my class called Jane, she oh. took on Miss Keeley. And she, I remember once she got so much trouble. She, because Mrs. Keeley was also the playground attendant. Yeah. And she was like, she was, Jane was doing something awful. And then she turned, Jane turned around to Mrs. Keeley after like she'd picked on, picked on her. And she went, this is why you won't ever get a husband. <laughs> How old is she when she said that? She was like seven, eight. <laughs> and I cannot tell you the drama this caused. Mrs. Keeley went like bright. She was called Mrs. Keeley though. So I don't understand. Did she not have a husband? Very mysterious woman. But she went like bright tomato red and was like screaming at this child, literal child, yeah. at the top of her lungs. And then like, we didn't see Jane for a little while after that. She was in the choking. Yeah. But going on to going into high school, yeah, so going do into you high have school. any tales from year seven? Oh, God. So year seven in the UK is a, from about 10, 10, 10 11, 10, 11. Um, kind of. So I went to high school in the year 2000. Same here. Well, 2001. I went. You went 2001. I went yeah. 2000. Yeah. Because she is an older woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a milf. Yeah. Do you want to wear mummy's wig? <laughs> so, so we actually, so we actually. <laughs> That's for you, Cathy Noir. So we actually had um, a separation with our high schools. So as we just said about your, your in school. So. We are my oh. high school. So it's called Queen Elizabeth's Community College, QECC as we called it. I was quick. as a quick. Um, so we had year seven, eight, which was one called QE Lower. Oh, we had a division on in my high school. One, s- yeah, but like they were like completely different oh. sites. They were like complete the other ends of like town. Um, so oh. Q- yeah, it, it was very strange. So oh, QE, Q- fascination. Woman weirdly, QE Lower was on top of a hill and QE Higher was on the bottom. Strange. Stupid. But so QE Lower was like year seven and eight, and then uh, upper school was uh, nine, ten, and eleven, sixth form. And so it's because uh, it was such a popular school. So I went from being in a primary school that was only had 64 people in the entire school to having, it was, we had like 300 people in our year group. Oh, oh okay. Just, yeah. It, okay, it was, that's it much was, bigger. It was humongous. Yeah. Um, we were all set, separated into classes. So it basically spat out creditons. Um, oh. oh, we had a similar thing, but it was so, Colours of the Rainbow. Mm, so Brighton, I was in Gaze, lol. We were in S. So I was S. 7S, 8S, 9S, 10S, so as the years yeah. went on. So this is when like my life really changed. So puberty started. My I was still a late bloomer compared to everyone else. My boobs were growing in. My boobs were going in. Um, but like, because, <laughs> because, because like, believe it or not, my voice has dropped. Um, <laughs> and like my and camp, my campness kind of started to show. Were you like, and at, at hello, the, yeah, at, at the let's very, do some religious work. Yeah. <laughs> so like, at the beginning of my time in high school, I kind of skated on the radar a little bit. But as time went on, my mannerisms started to show. Yeah. Um, and my campness started coming out and my swithy wrists. Um, you were like, hello, everybody. And so the bullying kind of really started. So my, my, my high school experience isn't as nice as my, my primary school. But oh my God, the shit that used to go down in our high school. Oh, same, we, sis. We, oh, where do I even... Well, I don't even know where to start. What was some rumours in your... In your uh, like in my high, high school. school. So I'll, I, I'm going to start because... So there was so many. There was a woman called Harriet. I think she's called Harriet. I think was that was her name. Girl? No, so oh. she apparently, I remember there was like this rumor going around that she had taken one of the school, cause there was like media studies. She had taken like one of the camcorders to do like one of her like uh, exams at home. Cause the, the media studies course all had a video camera given to them and they yeah. had to film like their own sort of like personal video, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And there was like this rumor Literally going YouTube now. Yeah, basically. And there was this rumor going around that she made like a sex tape for a teacher <gasps> and like the teacher had it and there was this big scandal that he was like this predator who like made Harriet do this um, scandal. Girls. It was, and I mean, it was never proven, but that was like one of the crazy things that used to go around that everyone was like, oh my God, she's the girl that made the sex tape for sir. She's the girl. It was absolutely disgusting. But there was, so there was, so 
there's a few rumors that actually were true. So there was a rumor oh. that um, one of our history teachers, Mr. Champion, was sleeping with a student. Oh yeah, and we everyone had was like, this everyone was like, well. it's, it was happening. And it was kind of like, no one was really believing it, but it turned out to be true. Um, we had three predators in our school, yeah. three pedophiles, which is like really weird. Um, one of our drama teachers called Mr. Hornblower, which is an awful name. Um, he made some students act out like lesbian scenes and like filmed it and stuff. It was oh my god, absolutely horrendous, absolutely horrendous. At school, yeah, literally at school, it was absolutely in a horrendous. class, yeah, in drama class. Now it was like it was like an after school uh, drama class that he was doing for them because they were like, helping. It was awful, but also um, I found so this is one that I found out uh, a few years ago. So when I was still living in Stratford. I was just being nosy about people that I work with in school mm-hmm. with looking at people. And, oh, I I do this. And one well. of our old gym teachers, Mr. Cole, was uh, found guilty of having sex with two <gasps> students in the nineties, and he he was he was like in like late 20, late twenties at this time, and he slept <clears throat> with awful, two students. Awful, like, awful, what is with not. these weird teachers? Like, disgusting. But. Other than like the it's most- It's more common than you think though. I reckon there's a lot of people watching this that will be like, yeah, we had the same rumors at my school and some of them turned out to be true. Yeah, it, it was it was nuts. But we also had like five kids in our year, my year group alone drop out before even finishing school because they oh, got yeah. pregnant and had babies well, and stuff. Not even that, but when we were in school, you could leave school without GCSEs. Could you? You, you could leave at 15 years old. Oh, when we were in high that. school, you could legally leave school at 15 and not get your GCSEs. Well, I, I now you have to have A-levels, which I is find it crazy true. that you could leave after GCSEs anyway. Oh, like, yeah. What 16 year olds know what they want to do? Like, but also, like the idea that you're 16, you've left, you've got a, a several Ds, and then you're like 22 trying to find a job, and they're like, can you speak English? And they're like, I got a D. I <laughs> got a D. Eight years ago in my GCSEs. Yeah. The idea that now you could go into a job and just say i've got a c in english at gcse like no, no one yeah no one would be like i have a first class biochemistry degree and there are jobs that go where's your master's where's, yeah where's your phd i'm like this is an eighteen thousand pounds a year job sis like why do you want a doctor for this yeah <laughs> yeah but it's just this these things these rumors that we had in my school yeah what some tell me some of your rumors so we had uh the two that i can immediately think of that are oh there's three actually that are true. Was well, they're not really rumors? They're things that happened as well. So there was Mr. Hewell, who was the drama teacher. Yeah. He was like eight feet tall. I remember every. He used to have this thing so that when you started your first year and you would go in and meet him, meet all the teachers, blah blah blah. He would always be sitting down. He'd always be sitting down in his room in the, in the drama because we had like a massive drama studio that we would go in. Yeah. And we'd have a ring of chairs, and he'd always be sitting down, and he'd get everyone to come in, and then he would introduce himself and stand up at the same time, and he was like seven feet one, and to like literal children, he was like. <gasps> <laughs> Where does this like demon come from? Demon. And everyone used to be like, he's gay. He's gay. He's gay. Mr. Hewell is gay. And then like at the towards the end of my time there at year eleven, he was like, This is my fiance. And it was a man. And I was like, Oh yes. But everyone was like, Just Disgusting. Oh my God, though. So we had a crazy music teacher. She was called Miss, Miss. Oh my God. We also had a crazy music teacher. Um, we were the same. Ours was anorexic, so, though, and used to throw things at students. So oh, that's. Yeah. Wow. This and she used to have a piano and she'd be like, do, 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 do. That means shut up, everyone. <laughs> oh, it was awful. So our teacher. I didn't even say what school I went to. Sorry for interrupting 19 yeah, times. Yeah, no, no. This is her worst habit. I do. Um, so Miss, she, was called, do. she was called Miss Buckingham. And. She, Oh my god! So the first ever day that we we had her, um, this is year nine. We walked into the lesson. She was like, "Hello, children, coming, girl." <laughs> Obviously not girls. But, and so she was first time. She was like, "So to get everyone used to each other, which is stupid. We've been we've known each other already." She was like, "We're all going to sing our names and clap." And so she sat, <laughs> so she was like, "This is what I'm going to do," and she just like stood in the middle of. She made us sound like a circle. She stood in the middle. And she was like. Miss Buckingham, Miss Buckingham, <laughs> Miss Buckingham, and Miss Buckingham, Miss Buckingham, Miss, and it was like, what are you doing? And then we were all just staring at her, like, what the absolute hell is going? On? And then she was like, <laughs> go on, guys, it's your turn. So we were all like, Roly, it's Roly, it's John, it's John, and it was like, what is happening? And it's the most embarrassing thing to make yin because like when you're when nowadays we if we get a bit drunk we'll do that whatever but like when you're like i want to stand in the middle of a room and go luxaria <laughs> like, luxaria exactly. but luxaria when i'm drunk at slime night next time <laughs> <laughs> but like when you're like i, can, I can, i'm gonna do that yeah, i can see that happening. but when you're when you're like 13 years old it's so embarrassing it's mortifying miss buckingham miss buckingham, buckingham. <laughs> <laughs> when 
when I finished year nine, going into year 10 and 11, that's when like most of people were like well and truly into puberty and things like yeah. that. And they were like becoming little adults. Mm-hmm. There was this girl, I don't know if she's going to watch this. Maybe she will. She was called Briny. And she was a piece of work. She was one of the worst people worst. That I've ever come across. She, awful, awful, awful girl. She used to really bully me. And I remember once I was walking down the corridor and she was just really kicking my backpack. And there was teachers just like, hello, Brian, yeah. Because yeah. they just did that. And then I remember like about a month later, she was expelled from the school all of a sudden. And everyone was like, what, she what gone for What's she gone for this? Turns out she was dealing cocaine. <laughs> She was dealing cocaine what? in year 10. So she must have been 13, 14. Really effed up girl, really effed up. But I was dating one of her best friends at the time called Jamie. There was another rumor as well about this guy called Tyler. So Tyler the goth. Tyler the goth. He, he was very, very troubled. And he was openly gay in like year eight. Oh, and I'm jealous. I wish I was openly gay. No, you don't. Eight. Not in Brighton. So or ironically, as much as Brighton is like, I was going to say it's House Brighton. How's the gays? Like, Every, it was the butt of every joke was to be like, are you just gay? Are you gay? Like, one of every three boys in Brighton is gay. Gay, 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 gay. Beat up because he's gay. It was that. So he was relentlessly bullied. Like awful, awful, awful. And he was kind of a bit bigger as well. One day, so he he had such a troubled school happening. He actually sent me a message on MySpace years later being like, you went to our school, didn't you? You were the kid with black hair. I was the kid with blue hair. And we wanted to meet up and stuff, but it never happened. Oh. So Tyler, if you ever happen to see this, Props to you, sis, for dealing with this in school. Patcham, Patcham High School is the school that I went to, sis. Patcham High School. Mm. Cancel the whole building. Cancel. Cancel. Burn it down if you'd go there. No, don't, because it will somehow be awful. Don't do that, sis. So, Tyler had to go through, like, relentless bullying, stuff like that. He ended up being put, I think it was, like, on report, I think it was called. Yeah. Wait, internal exclusion. So, you were, you still had to go to school, but you weren't in lessons with anyone else. Okay. It was basically, like, babysitting for teenagers or whatever and one day his sister had moved into year seven and because she was his sister she got bullied relentlessly for being the gay boy's sister and one day tyler snapped he brought in a knife (gasps) he brought in a knife to the school and he held one of the bullies up against the wall with a knife pressed against their throat screaming at the top of his lungs oh my god in the middle of reception in this bully's face i believe the bully was called lance actually and i've never seen something like that in my life like face to face. I've never seen someone viscerally screaming at someone in the face at knife point. And he was immediately removed from the school. I never saw him again after yeah. that point. I think I saw him once in a GCSE exam, like l- way at the end of year 11. That's like scary, but also like but you, you, you do empathize. Yeah. So yeah. very, very similar, not, not to that extreme. But um, the Kevin guy who was talking about who was with Caroline in, in music, yeah. um, he was bullied quite a lot as well. And I remember one it day- It drives people to madness. One, one day um, in year 10, he had snapped and he punched the bully in the face. Unfortunately, he got it worse like because the bully came mm. back at him. But then Kevin was the one who got in trouble. Stupid. Mental. Like this Absolutely person bullied. Insane. Like, and I, I was like, I never snapped to that extent because I was relentlessly bullied too. I was horrendous. Um, I just kind of dealt with it. I, I I was, I think I was very lucky that I didn't snap because I probably would have done something horrendous as well. Puffter, Batty Boy, Bender. Batty like, Boy was really big. I when would we were constantly young. have like notes thrown at me during lessons saying that, oh, I, wanna, I bet you just want to suck a dick, don't you puff? Like all this stuff. Well, yes, um, but also, and I was like, well, yes, are you going to yeah. show up or not? Yeah. Wasting my time since I've <laughs> Wednesday, got a line. Wednesday, Wednesday, I got Wednesday a free 7 a.m. Yes. But like, I, it was horrendous. I was, uh, there was sometimes, like, okay. Okay, so talk about bullying as well, though. Were your teachers ever doing anything about it? Because it sounds like they didn't. No, because never. I was so bad. Like, there was times where, like, I was... I remember one time we were waiting to go into IT lesson. And we were on, like, one of the top. We were, like... Uh, it was like... Oh, oh, my... I was bullied by a teacher. That's just come flooding back. Oh, God. Mrs. Denman of IT. No you dear. awful woman who awful. later became... Um, she later became the head teacher of the school. And I don't think she is anymore because everyone was like, Miss Demon's terrible. Disgusting. Yeah. But please carry on. I'm but when I was um, when I was going into my IT lesson, I remember uh, John Butt, he like rammed me up against the wall, uh, completely wind whipped, completely winded me out, couldn't breathe. Literal was, assault. Yeah, I was on the floor like um, not breathing. Everyone around me just laughing. Just found it absolutely hilarious. Teacher did nothing. Did you absolutely nothing? In in my English classes, um, I had things thrown at me during the lessons, books, everything. Teacher just is it active like it didn't happen because I was the gay one. Yeah. They didn't care. Like it's they awful, it was like it? the amount of times I went to the head teacher and said, I'm being picked on by this, blah, 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 blah this is happening. It was just like, okay, we'll, we'll sort it out. Nothing happened. To one stage that I had to have my grandparents actually come into the school and be like, you all need to fucking do something about yeah, it. It was yeah. like, because so 
I I was ready, ready to go home. And this guy called Daniel. I hate the fact that you were bullied in school. I really hate that because you were such a magical person in my life. The idea that someone would ever try and quash your personality makes me my, my heart actually hurt. But they're all scummy people. I now. know. They've done but nothing. Also, check your fucking children. Make Literally. sure they aren't literal cunts at school. To <laughs> exactly. Other people like, because you are a terrible parent if you allow your children to behave like that to yeah. other children yeah. in schools. But so I was waiting to go home. Daniel Evans, who was an absolute fucking rancid cunt, came over to me and just literally just punched me straight in the face. No reason, no, nothing at all. I was sort of like just shook by it. And people around me were like, what the fuck just happened? And then all of, so about a few minutes later, because we were waiting for the bus, he came up behind me, just jumped on my back and slammed me to the floor <gasps> like a headlock. No, literally, again. Unprovoked. No, no reason. No, no, unprovoked. Um, and I went home. I went to my, went to my grandparents. I went up to them and I was like, I am not going in tomorrow. Yeah. Like I'm not going in anymore. Cause this, this has been going on for like years at this point, just constant abuse from like so many people. My grandparents actually had to come into the school and be like, you need to do something about this. Like this is, or we will take it further. Like this is what I don't understand. So you said a minute ago, literal assault. I find it so insane that when you're in school and like bullying stuff happens, Kids are allowed to literally assault someone else yeah. and nothing gets done about imagine it. Imagine if that was done in work, in the office, someone was just like, push you up against the wall, wind you on the floor. Imagine. Yeah, exactly. Literally, like, like, it would be like, if a policeman saw that in the street, they'd be like, that is assault, that person yeah, is going I, to prison. Yeah, I don't understand why kids, kids get that like, freedom. They're allowed to punch each other in the face and bully people. And it's like, and I hate the phrase, oh, let kids be kids. You're not raising children, you're raising adults. Yeah, so the idea exactly. that you let children get away with this teaches them that later in life, they can be a drunk lout and punch a bouncer in the face and then get their spine severed when he yeah, reacts to yeah, them. It's, like, it, it's, it's so irresponsible. Yeah. So the situation that I have with Mrs. Denman is that at one point in my life, I had long black hair. It was about sort of this length to my um, decolletage mm. for those who are just listening. And it was black. And I remember I used one of those box dyes. So these box dyes were called Smart and you could like bleach in red streaks or purple streaks to your hair. Yeah. And I used red on the front of my hair. And so I had like, the, you know, like the e-girl style now that was like, wh like white at the front, black at the back. Yeah, yeah. It was that, but red. I even had it last year, the same thing. So I'd missed a day of school because I was not well. And I came in the following day and just in the middle of IT, she just turned to me while she was like giving her like, this is what we're doing in the today's lesson children she was like you've been to the hairdresser been to the hairdresser have you looks a bit gay in front of everyone i remember just being like oh, you can't like don't say that to me in here because like i was getting bullied for being a literal like gay goth kid at this yeah, time yeah. anyway because i hadn't i would never i didn't i never came out as like liking boys i just remember yeah. telling one telling one of my friends one day that i like had like a boyfriendy kind of thing. And I yeah. just never said those words, never said anything like that. Because as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't. It never felt right for me to say I was gay because I wasn't. Yeah. And now it makes a lot of sense to me now because I can say that I like boys now. But yeah. like to say that I'm gay now would mean I like girls. Yeah. And that is also incorrect. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And I just remember that feeling, that feeling of like, being bullied by a teacher, being like, I have no... The one person that needs to protect you in yeah. school. Yeah, it's, is... it's that it's that final realisation of like, you are actually on your own yeah. in this situation. Yeah. Like, if everyone suddenly turned on me, I used to have um, football, so we had a massive football field. Anytime I walk across the field, all the straight boys would be like, uh -huh, kick footballs at him. Oh, did, you, did you hear that? Did <laughs> no, you hear that stutter no, in my voice? Is, then? It feels weird. Like it's a bit like when you hear me say my, my old name, Roland. It, the same feeling we were going him, and it makes me go, "Oh, I'm, I like, know." It, it, yeah. So literally, me in school, they would kick it, uh, kick footballs. At, I remember once I was blissfully unaware, and it hit me square in the face, oh, and it God. was the most painful ricochet. I was just like, like almost knocked out completely. Yeah. Teachers didn't care. Teachers had no care at all in the yeah. world. Absolutely yeah. none. And it's so heartbreaking when you think of it now, because I want to tell you people that are listening, some of you might even be at high school now and having the worst time of your life. Anyone who tells you that high school, your school years are the best years of your life, I, it, need to get in the grave immediately because the they is, are the worst. You are going to be such a beautiful person when you leave that hellhole. It's such a like. People who say that, obviously... Peak in high school. Have... People that say that, peak, and then they have the worst time of their life in the rest of their life. Do you know high school is five years? If you've peaked then, you are nothing yeah. to the world. But also, they clearly didn't... Like, they clearly... They, either they were the bullies, or they... Like, no one who was bullied or had any hard time in school like we did, like, because we were different, like, can say in the best time of your life because... For us, for me, it was the, the worst, worst time of my life. It's like, given me some of the worst emotional baggage that I'm still dealing yeah. with now, 15 and that's a, years that's later. That's the thing. You, you never forget the bullying. Like, I know there, there are some levels and things like, 
I will always remember what happened to me. And I, I will yeah. always, it's left a lasting mark on me that will never go away. I will always remember your faces as you kicked that ball at me across the field. Yes, exactly. I yes. will remember yes. your faces forever, Rory and Gareth. Oh. Disgusting people. But no, you do. Like, it stays with you forever. So these people are like, oh, it's the best time of life. No. No, I mean, absolutely I've not. also, I, I mean, to take things to a slightly happier note, talk about things that you could never do now. Like me and my friends used to have chair fights. So we were going oh, to like, we would, we would go- have food fights? No, we never we food used to have fights. food fights in the canteen. But we would go into like one of the English classrooms. So where, where are like, do you know in school you have hangout areas? So like your little group- Mine was the quad. Was the quad. So or the we, reception. We had, we would always hang out- The Warm Dean Center. We would always hang out outside the uh, English block. There was like a wall, a little path, a little play thing. Um, and that was where we'd hang out when in high school. But sometimes we'd creep into the classroom behind us and we would like, one person would stand at one end of the room, the other person stand at the other end and we'd just throw chairs at each other. Oh, for God's like, sake. And make so much noise until the teacher would come. This is why I say I wasn't a good pupil. Until like the teacher would come and like tell us off. And then we'd be like, ah, ah, provincial queens. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. Provincial I queens? Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember where that was from. We, we heard it on something. Provincial queens? I know, I don't know. What do you mean? I don't, I don't know. What, you would call the teacher provincial queens? Yeah, we would just walk out the lesson in the room going, ah, provincial queens. Yeah. Daniel, if you're watching I mean, this, I don't remember what that was from, but I wonder why we said that. RuPaul would say that now. Um, <laughs> but also we would like, um, we, oh God, it was awful. We would go into IT lessons and Mrs. What's she called? What's she called? Miss Ellis? I think it was Mrs. Ellis. Um, L -Y. Elliot, Miss Elliot. It was Miss Elliot. With two teeth. And she was like, a, she was a bit, Funny. I don't. Know, I don't know how to explain. Like she was a bit like Miss Buckingham, but not as eccentric. Miss Buckingham. Um, Miss Buckingham. <laughs> and we would always like. This is awful. This is really horrible. So we would have like a projector at one end of the lesson. So like one end, one end of the classroom would be like a projector. No, no, no. no. So what are you going to tell <laughs> me? Do you want it was to look like my one behavior? end of the lesson uh, room was like a big whiteboard that would project on something, and like the computer that me and Daniel would use would be the computers that they would project the things on the screen. So whenever that would happen, we would like one of us would have to move away from the computer so the teacher could use it. But what we would what we would do is every time she would use it, she would look away. We would move one of the mouse across so she would try to use like a different mouse. And she'd always be like, why isn't it working? Why isn't oh it working? God. And then she goes, oh, it's the wrong mouse. And then we would like swap the keyboard over. <laughs> so she would try to use this keyboard. Like, why isn't it working? And we would do it all the time. And it was really horrible. And it got to a stage where literally we swapped over the mouse and she clocked onto what she was doing and oh, she yeah. just threw the mouse at oh. Daniel's face. <laughs> She's like, ugh, so oh, annoying. No. But people, there was one person who put a, a, a used, not a one that was used, but like put a condom in her hair when she was trying to teach. It was awful. I mean, I thought that was too far. It was absolutely awful. They were horrible to her. Like, we just swapped the mouse over, but pe people were horrible to Mrs. Ellis. Elliot, it was awful. It was horrible. They put a condom in her yeah, hair. Yeah, it was absolutely disgusting. That is absolutely. Imagine trying to live that down, being like, because the thing about high school, as anyone that's been to high school will know, is that rumors spread like, like any yeah. news of like someone getting one up on someone else would be like, like you can't have secrets in high school. Well, just like just knows. like Harriet and the filming, whether or not that I'm sure, I don't know if she actually filmed the sex tape, but like it, it just everyone spiraled. Knew. All of a sudden, everyone knew everyone, that was the girl. Well, it's like, um, there was a guy called Justin who pissed himself in science class. Oh dear. And the same day it His happened, queen. it was basically announced in assembly. Like everyone knew yeah. Justin was the one who pissed himself in the science lesson. Like awful. Because the teacher wouldn't let him go to the bathroom. It was, it was horrendous. <gasps> See, that's that's a thing. That's a thing that used to bother me so much mm -hmm. is that it, um, teachers would be like, well, there's been a break. Like, what do you think we were doing in the break, teacher? Do you think we were eating and drinking maybe? And yeah. then, you know, half an hour later, you need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I do find the strange. Like, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it's I'm, against, I'm sure it's a events against uh, the Geneva War Crimes Convention or something to be like, you're it, not allowed to it go It has to, to be now. I'm sure like, because when, yeah, when, when we were in school, like you could, teachers were allowed to do whatever the fuck they want mostly. Julie is a war criminal. Julie, <laughs> Julie is <laughs> oh, I Jesse is quaking. Um, like I, I, I can imagine like if you are, if a people ask you to the bathroom now, you can't say no. Like surely you're not allowed to. Yeah, surely you can't just to keep them in their own piss. Like it seems weird. But actually talking about, it, I remember actually just quickly driving back to primary school. Do you ever shit yourself? No. Oh my god, it was. I saw, you didn't. I did. So I was. No, like, I don't want to know no, about I this. No, I did. So I, like, I remember this was like year five or something. I don't know why my stomach was really poorly or something, and I like shat myself in the middle of the lesson, and I didn't tell anyone. And the teacher came over, and we were like sitting in like a circle. And she came over, she was like, "What's that smell?" And I was like, "Oh, I don't know." Um, and then I went to the the bathroom and like tried to clean myself as much as I want, but I was like, 
mortified. Like I don't know, I, I don't know why I didn't just put my hand out. I think I had no confidence or something, but like I shot myself in like primary school. Embarrassing as hell. No one knows oh that story. Oh my god. That is brand new experience. Yeah, a brand new experience. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. Oh my god. Well, I've never had a situation like that. No. I love how it's gotten dark by the time we I filmed. literally we've been filming for hours because we haven't done the one in ages. We've just like got all these stories. This I I do have another one that I wanted to share that I've okay, just honestly totally just keep going. There was so we had there was one guy um who fell out one of our fell out of the school window and like um, like broke his ankles and things. So oh they were playing. God. So where, how our school was set up in lower school was, there was like the the sort of like uh, assembly area where like lockers were and stuff and some like play areas, not play areas, but where we'd like the oh the lockers were stuff. taken away from our school so, because people used to push them on each other. Oh God! So like there was there was like, the building was here, but for some weird reason there was like. A massive cravat, crevasse? Was that a crevasse? Gaping orifice? Crevice? There was a, huge, a massive gaping there orifice. Was, there was a huge, like, hole Space. on the yeah. side of the building before, like, the bank started. And oh. so there was these, there, and, and it was like, basically, the, the entire hallway was just, like, glass windows. There was no um, blockage or anything. It was just glass, four floor to ceiling glass windows. And there were these two people doing, like, on the shoulder wrestling. Like, doing it on the shoulder, yeah. just trying to wrestle yeah. each other. And one of them fell out. Um, he was called Bertie. He fell out of Bertie. The, uh, Bertie. He fell out the window and like fell like <gasps> two stories down. I know it's like, two stories doesn't sound too much. Oh, it's compared still, it's, to, what twenty but feet? It, but it's still massive. And he landed on his back and like broke loads of his bones. And I remember it happened. I was in lunch and everyone just started like screaming, going, "Oh my god, Bertie's dead! <laughs> Bertie's dead!" And then. <laughs> These teachers running out, and there was just like <laughs> pupil like mangled on the floor. <gasps> uh, it was terrifying. But she's dead. <laughs> but like ever since that happened, they put like wood. Like yeah. the windows were still full floor ceiling, but they put like these big wood like blockades. First of all, like, but it's things like that. I'm like, how is that not already a safety concern? Yeah, for... weird. But they, you know what they say? Health and safety codes are written in blood because yeah. people get hurt by them. Yeah. And then they go, we can't have this. That's why we have Mind the Gap because people yeah. used to just die getting onto the Do train. Do you... I, so do you do you think in junk like schools now, um, in like the gyms and like the PE halls and things, they still have those like climbing apparatus? Oh, absolutely that not. They so were death traps. When we were younger, we, they, you would like pull them out from the wall and they were like climbing frames, they monkey were bars. They apparatus. Yeah. It was like monkey bars, climbing ropes, there climbing was, frames. Like, those like uh, rings. Those, rings, like, the hoop rings. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, I don't know if they're still around now, but like they were absolutely dangerous they were the so amount dangerous. of children that would fall from the top because they're really get, high yeah, as well to climb the ropes and then just jump off and yeah. die like i remember so do you ever remember like when it started when they started becoming like you can't use them anymore like if you got near them they'd be like stay away from the apparatus don't go near the apparatus it's gonna kill you a bit mm. like do you know um how over the top parents go when you turn the light on in the car yeah. and they're like it's because it's illegal we're, we're going to get arrested <laughs> we're going to get to prison girls <laughs> Like it was very that when you touch the apparatus. You are something else today, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so going on to like more sort of like drama that happened. In the year beneath me, there was this guy and he was like really, I don't even know. I think his name was Ryan. I want to say it was Ryan. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Or it might have been Liam. One of these four letter words that means nothing at all. And then he, um, I know everyone called Ryan and Liam. Mm. I'm sorry, girls. Oh God, how very fucking Katie Hopkins. Oh, my daughter in no. is not named after a place. No, no. I've never let anyone play with no. anyone called Tyler. Awful. Um, so she, so this guy was like incredibly weird, even for like this weird kind of standards. Time. It wasn't until like a few years after um, we all left school and we all left college and we were like getting on with our lives. Yeah, I must have been about twenty, nineteen or twenty. I saw something shared on Facebook, and it was like. Guy, this guy goes to prison for raping two girls who, who were like five or six years younger than him. So he was like a pedo rapist in the year beneath me at school. Wow. Absolutely awful. There was a girl that brought in a gun. <laughs> there was a girl that brought in a gun. I remember. So my friend Zainab gave me a, um, this is a entirely different story from what that. What kind of school have on. you gone to? Oh, Jesus, I thought mine was it, like, oh yeah, someone fell out of a window. You are like. <laughs> no, so it was, It was a, so the, the year that we left, it became one of those schools. That was, you know where they get a super head come in and have to turn it around? Oh, wow. What's it got, that goes into like. Like Ofsted people. Yeah. Right? So is it, it Ofsted? It, yeah. So it gets into Ofcom. Oh, no, Ofsted? Ofcom's a TV thing. I oh, think, I think it's, it's Ofsted. Ofsted. Yeah. So whichever the one is like the dangerous one that's like, you're going to get closed. This school's going to close if you don't yeah. turn it around. It was like. Um, into special measures is that what it was called I don't know something maybe. like that anyway basically it was really awful the head teacher was fired and the new one came in to try and turn it around um, so uh, my friend Zainab gave me a recipe for sugar cookies because she was from Colorado and I used to love this little she made them once for me and I was like you must give me the recipe as like, a must, child yes. 
And then there was this awful, her name was Jodie. Jodie with the blonde hair, awful, awful, but like ratty blonde, awful. And she, um, so she, we were walking past and I was reading my recipe and she snatched it out of, her, out of my hands. I didn't know this girl. She just tore it out of my hands, ripped it up and just carried on walking. And what? me and Zainab were just walking t- with each other, like really quiet, in- introverted children, basically walking. To your lesson. And now. it was like, just like shocking. And I remember Zainab turning to me and being like, I'll write you another one and it'll be okay. <laughs> and I just remember being really, really, really scared. But yeah, she brought a gun into school and was immediately expelled. Awful. I don't know if it was a real one or a replica or a BB gun or whatever, yeah. but the story was she brought a gun into school and she was expelled. Bing, bang, bong. Ding, dang, dong. I've got gout. Gout. Oh, did you ever have... Oh, so no, so I really want... This is a story I really want to tell you about. So... So I got very excited then. I, in my gay awakening, in my like, empowerment modes, all this gay stuff. Gay awakening um, and empowerment mode. Yeah. The new so single. So every, every single um, time we would go for summer holidays, we'd have like a talent show. Oh, and so oh that all sounds fun. Kids can just like, whatever year group they're in, um, they will go and say like, I want to be in talent show, I do this, blah, blah, blah. So like, I mean, we've had like good singers come from our school. We've had like, we've got even like models. There's a guy called Sam Way who's like a model for thing. Oh. He, he's from my school. Anyway, so we, when I was in year 10, there was a guy in sixth form who was like, two years above me. And I never, I didn't know who he was, but I'd seen him around because like you did... Six formers and the actual like school people never sort of interacted. Like yeah. you, you were on like two separate kind of like uh, places, like timetable. Yeah, all all the, all the all the where you would go for your lessons were not with where yeah. we would go for lessons. So but you can't put adults with children. Yeah, exactly. So we had like a big division, but he. So I didn't really know who he was, but people there was like rumors that he was like the gay one. He was Aww. the gay one. We had one of these as well called Dan, and I dated him pre- for a moment, and it was Ooh. very upsetting. Well. And so this talent show is going on. Kids are doing their thing. Some some are shit, some are good. All of a sudden, it goes to this guy who's on the stage. And I was like, what's happening? Like, why is this like, because I was like, that's that one. And he does this like super choreographed, incredible dance to fucking Toxic by Britney (gasps) Spears. And it's like, does it in front of everyone in the school. So he just did this dance and I kind of saw that as like he was doing as like a fuck you to everyone as if like it was like I've been bullied fuck yeah. you because I remember seeing it my moment. and at first I was like <gasps> it was amazing but it's honestly I, I still remember exactly everything he was doing with the taste of your lips and he was, oh, like, it, it was it, no, but it was actually really good. It I wasn't know, shit. but I just know that there were people but, being like waiting to prey on but him. But I can imagine, like for me, I saw that and was like, oh my God, I want to be like him. And ever since then, I was like, I need to meet him. I need to stay alone to him. I need to stay alone. We never did. But Aww. it was like, I was just like, fuck me. I want to be out and proud. Because ever since then, everyone was like, yes, of course. Because even, even one of the, even one of, uh, fucking Mark Elliott Cannon, at the end of it, he went, gay. Oh, and it was just like, for fuck's sake. sake. Yeah. Um, God, he was once one of the people who are horrible to me in school. Why are people, why, why do people use that as an insult? Why do they think shouting gay at someone is bad? Like, what, like, yes, and suck this dick, bitch. <laughs> like, I hate it when people do that because it's just like, it's not an insult. Gay. Gay. Like, All right. Let me take you to 2011. I'm going to say a slur here. Let me take you to Tranny Shack and see how you can get away with that. With yeah, actual imagine. grown men in wigs. Say that to them and see how it goes, mm-hmm. sis. London, 12 midnight, 12 Wednesday, <laughs> Soho. Yeah. <laughs> 2011. <laughs> I would like to end that story with saying to you guys at home that if you are struggling during high school, don't worry. It means absolutely nothing for the rest yeah. of your life. Yeah. And if you are doing really well and peaking in high school and you're really popular, sis, grow that personality because it's going to disappear. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as you leave high school, that's going to disappear. People won't remember you. That popularity you have now ain't going to stay. It's not going to last. Like yeah. If you're popular in school, that does not matter. Yeah. Make sure you grow your personality garden yep. and be a nice person because yep. you want to be the one that people look up on Facebook in 10 years time and go, I wonder what they're doing. And yeah. you, they see you doing really well and they're like oh i'm so glad that 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 worked out well for Uh them the amount let me just tell you the amount of bullies from my high school that message me on instagram or message me on facebook and go "Uh, Uh, let me slide into uh, your underwear uh, let me see your gaping orifice and i'm just like you are you're like okay you are filth and I hate you. Yeah. Never speak to me. I always get them adding me on Facebook now then wondering what I'm doing. It's really funny. I'm like, of course they I'm do. Su- I'm a successful businesswoman. Exa- what are you? I'm a successful businesswoman. Yeah. Like if you want to know any more about me, watch my channel, bitch. Yeah, exactly. Goodbye. But yeah, so I wanted to leave on that positive note that if you are struggling in high school, don't worry. It means nothing. 
Yeah, I do. I do. Your bullies will amount to nothing. These, like, I don't even know what half of them are doing. I know that most of the people that I would school with have had like eight children. Yeah, they now have four children. Dead. Dead. (laughs) But yeah, so I actually, I know a few that have. (laughs) Very good. Also, I like. The new setup. Yeah, t- t- tell me what you think about the new setup. Sitting I got at a some... table feels like I'm more involved and I can actually share a lot more. Yeah, I've got some nicer microphones. It sounds a bit better for people who are on SoundCloud or iTunes or anything. Mm. Uh, um, and we've decided to come and sit up here instead of being on the sofa just so it just looks a bit nicer. I feel like I'm looking at myself a lot of this video. I very apologize. Um, I'm very apologize. Uh, I, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching thank um, you, if you are still uh, here now please comment down below some of your own sort of like shocking moments oh in absolutely it would be interesting to know I'm always lurking in the comments on these yes I'd love to uh, see oh billowing Susan's billowing here woman. people can't see There's, it's very windy here in London today um but yeah so please like leave some comments down below of your own experiences you've had in school is there anything that like you would want to go back and do again or anything that was like shocking that was like oh here's a question to leave it on i wonder if you've got a short answer for this if you could repeat high school would you only if i had the mentality i have now really if i had the mindset that i have now because yeah. i wouldn't care if people bullied me so like yeah i'm yeah. gay off. okay okay but like, i on the other hand would not like to go to high school as a trans person so no i will oh, not be no, repeating yeah. that <laughs> i think i think it just depends like i would only repeat it if i had the confidence i have now yeah okay. if i had to repeat it with the same mi- mi- mindset no fucking way no because i was a mess yeah no i would not repeat it in a heartbeat mm. but i would like to still stay friends with the person that i'm friends with yes yeah well they've always spoken to me so they hate you <laughs> Good. <laughs> Don't leave me this way. Copyright. I've got Susan's yeah. gonna get you. Anyway, guys, we're gonna see you soon. We lots of love to you. Um, and we'll see you for another episode soon of yes. Gag of the Pushly Push. Gag of the Melania. Gag of the Melania. Bye guys. See you later, girls.